Okay. My voice is more. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you understand me? Yes. 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 Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Should I start now? No. Uh, I don't know, Carlos. Uh, let's see what talk. Okay, we are on time. And when do you want to, to start with the seminar, please? Mm. Okay. Um, thank you very much for all the assistance. And uh, I want to uh, present, to introduce to the professor Ebrutoxoy. And uh, the professor uh, Ebrutoxoy recited her PhD degree in chemical engineering in the year. Uh, to, uh, and uh, currently she is working as a professor of the bioengineering department at Marmara University, Istanbul, Turkey. She is the principal investigator of the industrial biotechnology and system biology. Professor Toxoyoner, current research in um, EBSB and focus on biomaterials, functional foods, and system microbiology. Ongoing research topics are functional bio, biosurface, laser-based technologies, extremophilus, fructans, levan polysaccharides, strain improvement for exopolysaccharide production, production of the biopolymers for extremophiles, and optimization of the fermentation process to design high yield products lines. Professor Toxoy has been the coordinator of several national and international projects and partners in cost action. She is a member of the European Federation of Biotechnology, American Nanoscience Society, American Chemical Society, International okay. Society for Extremophilus, Turkish Biotechnology Society, and author of various books, chapters, reviews, and more than 18 uh, reviewed research articles. And we are pleased to hear uh, to Dr. To Professor Evrutoxoy. Thank you very much, Evry. Um, thank you, Clarita, for this nice uh, introduction. And I would like to thank the um, organizers for giving me the chance to introduce our research uh, here. I'm Sí, al 55, 43, 48, perdón, 39, 84. Apaguen 75. sus micrófonos, por favor. Um, okay. Uh, I'm now in uh, Istanbul, Turkey, uh, 14 hours uh, flight away uh, from um, Mexico. And um, this is our research group. Uh, it's Industrial Biotechnology and Systems uh, Biology Research Group. And our facilities are at the Bioengineering Department of Marma University in Istanbul, um, Turkey. Uh, our research is mainly on four platforms of uh, glycotechnology, namely biomaterials, bioprocesses, systems, microbiology, and functional food. Today, I'll be mostly talking about our research on biomaterials and especially on in uh, re our research involving uh, Halomonas Levan uh, polymer. And um, if you get interested to learn more, please use um, this uh, link to enter our world. Um, in our research, we use extremophiles for the microbial and enzymatic production of bioactive compounds. And after their downstream processing, purification, um, we are also actively searching for their potential applications in biomedical, um, tissue engineering, uh, drug delivery, function food, and very recently on uh, cosmetic uh, areas. So I said we are re using extremophiles. Uh, well, extremophiles are microorganisms that not only tolerate, but um, usually they require environmental extremes for their survival or, and growth. And by extremes, we mean physical extremes like temperature, pressure, or radiation. 
or geochemical extremes like salinity, desiccation, oxygen tension, and uh, pH. Um, this uh, future of extremophiles can actually be associated with the physiological extremes. And our main hypothesis in our research is that since these microorganisms can function at such extreme conditions, then their bioactive compounds should also function at extremes and have unique features outperforming their normal uh, counterparts. In our research, we use thermophiles um, that live at uh, very high uh, temperatures, uh, also holophiles um, that require salt for their growth. And uh, we use microorganisms that are isolated from different parts uh, of the world. And in this talk, I will um, mainly talk about uh, a specific uh, halophilic isolate. Um, why halophiles? Uh, actually, halophiles that uh, love salt or that uh, they grow in the presence uh, of salt, require salt, they are considered as important uh, microbial cell factories. They, are, they function like a factory. Um, they have the advantage of uh, growing in very high salt and uh, in under such high salinity, other microorganisms cannot grow so that um, you can use uh, seawater for the production instead of uh, fresh water. And uh, they are they uh, their production conditions, high salinity prevents contamination by other microorganisms. Uh, so they are perfect for open and unsterile, a production of compounds at a low price and in a sustainable way. Um, this uh, uh, Halomonas uh, levan is the levan polysaccharide that is produced by the Halomonas smyrniensis microorganism that we have isolated from a southern area in Izmir in uh, Turkey. And um, Actually, this microorganism is uh, credited as the first Levan producer extremophile, and it can also accumulate uh, polyhydroxyalkanoids. These uh, are also very important uh, polyesters in the cell. And uh, our group has uh, actually optimized for the co-production of uh, Levan and PHP uh, by this uh, holophile. Um, so what is uh, Levan? Levan is a fructan that is a homopolymer of fructose uh, units uh, like uh, inulin, but Levan has a, a 2,6 uh, beta uh, glycosidic uh, bond. Um, well, fructans are uh, actually uh, very important uh, polymers because unlike uh, glucans um, such as starch and cellulose, they do not participate in the physiological functions of animals due to the lack of the hydrolytic enzymes in the upper parts of the gastrointestinal tract, and they are only metabolized by colon microbiota. Thus, this makes lemon a perfect candidate as prebiotic fiber in functional foods and as a biomaterial for drug delivery systems and biomedical applications. Um, furthermore, unlike uh, glucans, the hydrolysis products uh, of uh, levan and uh, inulin are fructose based rather than glucose and therefore uh, these molecules are also suitable for diabetic uh, patients. Also fructans are known to interact with biological membranes and stabilize membrane structures to much greater extent than uh, glucans. 
Actually, um, Leowan is uh, not a new polymer. It has been known for more than a century with the first papers published by the end of the 1800s. However, the scientific interest was shifted towards other similar polymers like DEXA and only after uh, around 2000s, there is a renewed interest in this highly neglected polymer. And as you can see in the last decade, the number of Web of Science documents increased uh, very uh, fast after uh, year uh, 2000. Um, but um, as uh, Einstein said, everything in life is uh, relative. Um, when you compare the number of documents uh, appearing on the web of science with other um, uh, well-known polymers like alginate dextran or chitosan, um, the Levan resource is still in its um, infancy. Um, well, uh, in fact, uh, there are um, many um, uh, the uh, lemon has uh, many different uses in different uh, industries, and there are uh, some uh, lemon producing uh, companies that use different uh, sources, and it is approved uh, as food and feed additive and marketed in uh, different uh, countries. Um, uh, actually, um, Levan is uh, a very, very uh, sticky uh, polymer. This is one of its um, most uh, unique uh, features. And uh, back in 2000s, um, as part of a, a project uh, directed by the US Department of Defense, um, the um, the adhesive uh, strength of Levan was uh, compared with uh, some other uh, well-known sticky polymers like dextran and carboxy uh, metallates, uh, carboxy metacellulose, and Levan from Bacillus uh, subtilis was found to have the highest adhesive uh, strength. Well, there are a, a lot of microbial uh, Levan producers, and since 2009, we have been working on optimizing the microbial production conditions by the Halomonas smyrnaensis uh, cultures. Um, this microbial uh, production is actually catalyzed by a single enzyme called uh, Levan sucrase, uh, and currently, um, we are routinely producing Levan using a recombinantly produced Levan sucrase enzyme um, uh, in our lab. Um, once purified, uh, we use uh, the native form of Halomonas uh, Levan, as well as its uh, chemically um, chemical derivatives, uh, such as uh, hydrolysis, carboxymethylation, methylated, phosphonated, sul sulfonated, and oxidated forms. In order to produce hydrogels, nano or microparticles, as well as uh, films and uh, membranes. Um, and now I will give uh, some examples on our research for uh, the development of uh, functional uh, biomaterials that involve uh, a halomonas uh, lava. Um, uh, I will start with uh, the uh, films, uh, blend films, with the native uh, Halomonas Levan back in the 2013 or uh, published in 14. Um, we obtained um, 
uh, Turner blend films with uh, chitosan and uh, polyethylene uh, oxide um, by a very simple casting method. And uh, those films were um, characterized uh, for their uh, properties. And uh, th those uh, films containing uh, Levan polysaccharide were uh, found to have a better, um, um, uh, better biocompatibility uh, properties uh, when uh, against uh, fibroblast cells. Um, when compared with those uh, films uh, not containing uh, lemma. Um, in another uh, study in collaboration with, um, with uh, uh, Tribis uh, Research Group in uh, Portugal, um, we obtained um, uh, 10 um, films uh, of um, phosphonated derivative of uh, Hagemonas levan. So here the levan was uh, first phosphonated. And uh, in these 10 films, these were obtained by the layer by uh, layer uh, technology where um, the, um, the, uh, the solutions of different polymers are prepared and uh, the um, substrate is dipped in these um, solutions um, sequentially, and you have the development of uh, thin layers of different uh, polymers. And we obtained um, thin films, um, 50 layers of uh, thin films of phosphonated lemon with chitosan, and those films were compared with those of alginate and alginate as you know is a very commonly used uh, polymer in the biomedical uh, sector and um, when we um, looked at the uh, adhesivity uh, of uh, these uh, films the adhesive forces were uh, found to be three times higher than the uh, control alginate films. And um, in this study, we made a benchmark with the commonly used um, um, used uh, bonds, uh, medical adhesives. And uh, those films were uh, very um, promising. And uh, also here, as you see, um, the cellular adhesion uh, was also much, much higher when alginate in these films were replaced by this phosphonated uh, Levan polymer. Um, then we used the same layer by layer technology to obtain a viscoelastic freestanding membranes that are based on chitosan, alginate, and uh, sulfated derivative of levan. I will come to this. Um, and um, the when um, sulfated uh, levan was, sulfonated levan was added to these films, um, we, were, uh, we were able to show that uh, the films uh, were improved in their uh, smoothness and hydrophilicity, the um, tensile stress for uh, rupture was much, much higher in these uh, films. Um, and uh, very interestingly, again here, the adhesion strength was uh, almost four times uh, higher in these uh, films. And in vitro uh, cell culture uh, studies also show that these films were uh, cytocompatible and myoconductive. Uh, and therefore, these membranes um, were suitable for uh, cardiac tissue engineering uh, applications. And uh, I'll try to show you a video on how sticky these films are. Um, here on the uh, left, you see the same membrane with uh, alginate, and on the right, the membrane that contained the uh, sulfated levan 
that is not so easy to detach. Um, uh, I would like to uh, give also some examples about uh, um, uh, micro and uh, nano carrier systems uh, studies that uh, we uh, did. Um, this is a very uh, interesting property of uh, Levan based fructans. In aqueous solutions, they form um, spheroids of um, 200 to 400 diameter, depending on the uh, conditions. And back in, in 2011, we showed that it, this is actually a very uh, suitable property for the delivery of certain macromolecules. And um, also we used uh, a, a very a simple uh, solution uh, method um, to obtain uh, biodegradable micro, uh, level microspheres for the uh, delivery of vancomycin uh, antibiotic. And uh, in a, a more recent study, uh, we uh, produced a, a Levan uh, PRGA uh, based uh, drug delivery system for the controlled release of curcumin. Um, actually, curcumin is a hydrophobic uh, polyphenol that is derived from turmeric. And uh, there is a very um, intensive amount of research on uh, this compound because of its um, a very uh, important um, uh, pharmaceutical uh, properties, um, mainly the, the anti-cancer uh, activity. Well, this uh, curcumin has a lot of um, therapeutic potentials, but um, um, it has very low bioavailability because of its poor water solubility. Uh, it has low in vitro stability and it has a rapid in vivo uh, metabolism. And all these factors are actually the main barriers to its uh, clinical uh, development. And uh, in uh, our uh, study, we produced a, a Levan PLGA uh, system, a binary system, um, uh, for uh, by the method of oil and water emulsification uh, solvent evaporation method, and um, we optimized. Uh, uh, the conditions by quality by design methods uh, in order to determine the most stable formulations. Um, and uh, after a risk uh, assessment, uh, the impact of uh, various process parameters were determined uh, and Levan chain length, uh, PIGA and solvent amounts were found to be uh, important risk factors. And uh, after the uh, stability analysis, uh, we were able to uh, see that the um, uh, formulations containing Levan were uh, stable at room temperature for 60 days, while the control group not containing Levan was only stable for 15 days days. Um, then in a follow-up um, in vivo study, we were able to show that Levan increased the uptake of the formulations and led to a 10,000-fold increase in the solubility of curcumin. And the particles, these Levan-based particles, show better tumor treatment then this gemcitabine that is used as an anti-cancer agent and showed great potential to be used simultaneously with chemotherapy. Uh, 
Besides uh, this uh, nanoparticle, uh, micro and nanoparticle research, uh, I would like to talk uh, about the hydrogels uh, that we obtained with um, Levan. Now, uh, the first uh, hydrogels, Levan-based hydrogels, were actually stimuli uh, responsive. Um, by using uh, an isopropyl acrylamide, which is um, polymerized by this bisacrylamide, to obtain temperature responsive uh, hydrogels. Uh, but uh, NIPA hydrogels are uh, synthetic hydrophilic but non-biodegradable materials and bisacrylamide that is usually um, used as a cross anchor in these uh, thermoresponse of gels is actually very toxic um, and causes local inflammation. So in order to replace uh, this uh, bisacrylamide, um, we produced a Levan-based cross linker um, but, uh, and we uh, synthesized this cross-linker by metacrylating the hydrolyzed and carboxymethylated uh, lemon. So in here, the lemon is first hydrolyzed and then um, metacrylated. This metacrylated lemon is then used in order to produce uh, these um, hydrogels. And in this study, these hydrogels, these uh, responsive hydrogels, were used um, for the release of a model drug. And 5-amino uh, salicylic acid is used uh, as a model drug. This is a, uh, actually a drug of choice in the treatment of uh, inflammatory bowel diseases like the Crohn's disease and ulcerative uh, colitis. But uh, there are some limitations with the use of uh, this uh, drug, um, such as uh, gastric ir irritation and fast absorption in the small intestine uh, compared with the colon. And um, um, so in uh, order uh, to uh, increase the uh, biocompatibility of uh, these uh, hydrogels. Metacrylated levan was used as a, a cross-linker and uh, we produced hydrogels with increasing amount of uh, levan. And um, the volume phase transition temperatures of these uh, time response of hydrogels were um, measured. And uh, we found out that uh, this VPTT uh, of the gels increased um, with uh, the amount of Levan and they increased uh, up to 35, which is very close to the uh, body temperature. This is important since below this temperature, um, the, the uh, active uh, bioagent is encapsulated and above this temperature, the hydrogel collapses and releases its uh, contents. And uh, as you see in uh, the uh, drug release uh, profiles of uh, different gels, um, the release rate is, was found to be changing with uh, the hydrogel composition whether it's containing Levan or not. And uh, also the biocompatibility of the, uh, of the gels increased with the Levan content in the gels. Uh, in another uh, study, um, new metacrylated Levan derivatives were synthesized and uh, their photochemical linking with different photoinitiator systems and reaction conditions resulted in hydrogels of diverse uh, properties. And the modified Levan derivatives showed moderate swelling and the degree of swelling did not differ significantly among the three media tests, namely the uh, Voltaire simulated body field and 
and um, PBS. Um, this um, um, hydrogels uh, were uh, actually um, subjected to uh, washing um, for eight days, and uh, each day uh, they were tested for their cytotoxicity. And uh, the um, two uh, metacalated uh, gels, uh, hydrogels, were uh, biocompatible, uh, whereas the uh, the other one um, was uh, only biocompatible after uh, five days of uh, washing the uh, hydrogels, and uh, they only became uh, compatible after um, a, a total uh, washing of the uh, gels. Um, so this is very important, uh, and it shows how important it is to use which uh, which. Um, uh, accolade uh, source and uh, cross-linking uh, method. Um, also, uh, we subject this gels to uh, degradation and uh, after uh, 542 days, these gels showed 10 to 20% of uh, weight uh, loss. So these were uh, quite stable in uh, SPF uh, against um, hydrolytic uh, degradation. Um, until now, we used uh, accelerated gels with um, some uh, toxicity uh, issues, but um, we were searching for some uh, more uh, green ways of um, synthesizing lemon based hydrogels. Um, in order for their use in uh, biomedical applications much uh, safely. So um, we decided to uh, use uh, one for butan diglycidyl ether, BDDE. Um, this is actually widely used um, is a cross-linker for hyaluronic acid-based injectable uh, hydrogels. So BDDE uh, was chosen as a, a green cross-linker for uh, the um, hydrogels. And these hydrogels uh, are um, used for the controlled release of the um, hydrophobic um, antibiotic amphotericin B that is uh, commonly used uh, for the treatment of candidiasis, which is a fungal infection of the skin uh, by candida albicans. Um, well, this uh, amphotericin uh, is a hydrophobic uh, drug and uh, its toxicity uh, is um, uh, limits its uh, clinical uh, use. Um, uh, so by uh, optimizing the reaction conditions of uh, Halomonas Levan uh, with uh, BDDE, uh, we were able to obtain uh, hydrogels based on this native unmodified uh, Halomonas uh, Levan. And uh, these gels were uh, characterized, of course, and they were also loaded with uh, amphotericin B and their drug release profiles were uh, obtained. They are uh, characterized as well. And um, uh, as you see, this is the dry hydrogel and this is the swollen one. And the swelling under different conditions revealed that um, the uh, swelling of these gels were uh, pH dependent rather than temperature. And with these hydrogels, we were op we obtained a swelling ratio of nine, which was the highest uh, um, uh, of uh, Levan based uh, hydrogels so far. Um, 
and uh, other characterizations uh, showed that we were able to obtain a viscoelastic hydrogels that were uh, biocompatible. Um, and um, they were able to release um, amphotericin B in a controlled uh, way, and they were uh, bio uh, compatible. And um, motivated by uh, these uh, results, um, in a, a follow up study, that is uh, in currently in press. We use BDDE uh, to obtain hydrogels with the hydrolyzed uh, levan and phosphonated uh, halomonas levan. And uh, these gels were used for the controlled release of resveratrol. They were, uh, of course, again, um, uh, subjected to release studies and characterization. Um, as you know, resveratrol is an um, um, important uh, polyphenolic compound. It is isolated from the grapes, peanuts, and berries, and have a lot of biological properties like anti-carcinogenic, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-obesity, analgesic, age-defying, lipoprotein regulatory, uh, platelet aggregation inhibitory um, properties. Um, but despite all these uh, reported pharmacological benefits, resveratrol has limited applications due to its poor water solubility, um, poor stability in solutions, short half-life, as well as its weakened therapeutic effects due to poor absorption and photo instability. Both native and phosphonated Hermanas Levan hydrogels were obtained uh, in this study. And uh, these hydrogels were found to retain their um, rigid gel structure. Uh, it increasing shear stress conditions. And also um, tech tests show that um, the phosphonated uh, Levan had uh, better adhesive properties confirming the, the, um, the results that we obtained um, with, uh, with the Portugal. Um, also, the hydrogels were uh, loaded with uh, resveratrol and they were shown to release it in a controlled way. And uh, we made uh, cell culture studies with human keratinocytes and results revealed that the gels could be used for the drug release applications. And we proposed Levan as a potential biocompatible polymer in drug formulations of um, resveratrol. Another interesting derivative of Levan is the sulfonated one. Um, in order to obtain a heparin mimetic uh, activity, we subjected Levan to, to uh, increasing um, levels of uh, sulfonation. And um, in order to get heparin mimetic activity, and uh, we uh, saw uh, that the anticoagulant activity um, increased with increasing um, sulfation, the sulfate uh, groups on the uh, polymer. And then uh, in a subsequent study, these sulfated polymer were used in order to obtain electrospan scaffolds um, to be used for cardiac tissue engineering um, applications. Um, another um, interesting uh, subject is 
um, the, the use of uh, these fructans for some harsh uh, manufacturing um, processes like laser-based uh, technologies. Um, in uh, collaboration with uh, National Institute for uh, Lasers in Romania, um, we investigated the um, potential of uh, this uh, levan uh, to be used uh, to obtain uh, thin nanostructured films by these uh, laser-based uh, technologies. And uh, we used uh, the native Levan in its oxidized form. In this oxidized Levan, you obtained the uh, aldehyde groups. And uh, we were able to um, obtain nanostructured, smooth, organized surfaces with both uh, polymers by this matrix assisted pulse laser evaporation technique, maple technique. Um, actually, uh, this was very interesting because um, this group was trying to obtain uh, bio-based surfaces with other uh, biopolymers, and most of those biopolymers failed, while Levan uh, was uh, quite promising in this respect. And, um, and the oxidized uh, Levan um, uh, in these uh, films induced an increase in cellular uh, proliferation when compared with the uh, simple uh, Levan coatings. So there are uh, better, higher absorption of um, bone cells on these uh, surfaces, on these uh, coated uh, surfaces. Uh, with Levan. Then we used a combinatorial maple approach, which is a simultaneous deposition of these two polymers on uh, the surface to, to obtain gradients of the two polymers and to see what uh, will uh, happen. And uh, we, we saw that uh, there were some regions on these surfaces with some uh, additive properties of the two uh, polymers um, alone. Um, so um, this was uh, very uh, interesting. And then we were um, able uh, to show that um, there was a direct relationship between the uh, amount of the, these aldehyde groups coming from Nevan and the uh, cellular attachment on uh, these films. So this. Um, this clearly showed that uh, when using this oxidized Levan on this laser-based technologies to obtain a better uh, surface um, um, attachment. And uh, also recently we used this uh, sea maple uh, technique with uh, sulfated uh, halomonas Levan and uh, quaternized low molecule um, chitosan to obtain a uh, thin coatings. And uh, despite these harsh laser uh, conditions, the films uh, retained uh, their uh, anticoagulant activity and they were uh, biocompatible. And um, um, the uh, blending these two polymers um, resulted in some areas on these uh, surfaces with increased hydrophobicity and also retained uh, uh, antibiofilm uh, activity and anticoagulant uh, activity. And um, finally, we are also involved in producing uh, three-dimensional structures with um, containing Levan. Uh, here we have a 3D uh, bio uh, printed um, um, uh, scaffolds um, with increasing amount uh, of uh, Levan, and um, we saw that uh, the uh, compatibility of uh, these uh, structures increased. Uh, with the um, amount of uh, Nevan they uh, contain.
Um, so um, there are uh, some uh, studies um, that are still in progress, but um, uh, I would uh, like to give some uh, take home uh, messages. Um, as you see, there is an ever growing uh, attention to uh, Levan polysaccharide in health related uh, applications, mostly because it's a um, very interesting uh, polymers and the results that are accumulating uh, day by day in uh, literature. Uh, one very um, important issue is that the, the, the polymer that you obtain from um, different organisms may have different uh, properties. And um, even the, the polymer that you obtain from microbial um, production and enzymatic production differ by the branching uh, degree. So uh, that is why it's very, very important to discover uh, novel sources of this uh, polymer because they would um, produce different polymers with uh, very interesting uh, properties. Um, so this uh, polymer has a lot of uh, different uh, properties and these antioxidant, anti-tumor, prebiotic, uh, hypoglycemic features are very well uh, documented and um, uh, it's a fact that uh, there will be um, a lot of new uh, findings and um, in this um, um, studies. Um, it is also quite interesting uh, to use uh, derivatives of uh, Levan polysaccharide because these derivatives may uh, come with the, uh, interesting uh, properties as well. Also with Levan you can make gels and films and they open up new uh, possibilities for different tissue engineering applications. Um, so far, so good. So you can make all uh, these uh, different um, materials with uh, Levan polysaccharide, but um, the main issue with the wider use of this polymer in biomedical applications, its synthesis and purification cost is very, very high. Though it's used, uh, it's uh, produced from sucrose, um, uh, it's still not uh, produced at, uh, not, um, at uh, low. Uh, prices instead of sucrose, you can use other ch cheaper carbon sources, but uh, they they require um, uh, pretreatments that uh, increases the production cost a lot. Uh, the enzymatic synthesis is uh, very uh, easy, uh, and it gives an uh, advantage. Um, so, well, but still it requires more research to lower the production and um, purification uh, stages. Um, another uh, current uh, drawback of uh, biomedical applications of uh, Levan is that there are not many studies, uh, in vivo studies on uh, Levan, and most of the studies are still focus on the in vitro uh, approaches and um, also more uh, studies on the pharmacokinetics uh, are uh, required. Um, and mostly um, even major findings on Levan's biological and physiochemical characteristics remain as literature knowledge and they are not carried into the sector and with expanding studies on both its production and applications. In near future, Levan will uh, hopefully find itself a wider usage in our lives. Um,
I would like to thank uh, Clarita and uh, Agustin and all my friends from uh, Mexico for um, for giving me this chance to to talk about my research. I wish I were there actually giving this uh, talk in person. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, visiting your country back in 2016 in the, um, at the Fructan conference uh, that was organized by Mercedes. And uh, we had a great time in Oaxaca. We visited Monte Alban. These were um, amazing uh, memories. Uh, I will never uh, forget. And I hope to visit again in the future. And if um, um, you are somewhat interested in uh, fructan research, I would like to invite you to the next International Fructan Symposium, which we uh, will organize here in Istanbul uh, in May next year. I hope so. Uh, so it's been uh, delayed since 2020 for two years. And uh, if you're interested, you can um, get more information from its uh, website. So um, thank you all for your patience. Uh, and uh, I would uh, like to answer your questions if you have any. Thank you very much, Evo. Very, very interesting. All the applications that you have uh, for the Levan producing for uh, from Halomons. And uh, I have a couple questions, but I prefer that read the questions of the, of the chat. Um, Marcela Ayala, thank you for your lecture. Very interesting. In your opinion, what is the most promising application of Levans in terms of the everything you mentioned? Cost, synthesis, lack of information for certain applications. What is the advantage of Levan over other readily available polysaccharides such as uh, ketosine? Okay, um, actually, there is one very important property is that Levan is not uh, attacked by the uh, metabolic enzymes uh, once taken by the human body, and therefore it's, um, it's, um, it can uh, escape um, the, um, the system and release its contents uh, whenever uh, you, uh, wherever you want um, by a careful strategy. Uh, this is one very important uh, property. Um, and its hydrolysis products are fructose-based, not glucose-based. So it can be used for diabetic patients, as I mentioned in my talk. Another important property is that it um, uh, it interacts with biological membranes a lot. So uh, when you use Levan in your formulations, it's, uh, I think it facilitates the, the, um, the intake of those macromolecules in, into the cells. So the efficiency of uh, these formulations increase a lot. This is what we see so far. Um, also, it's bio, it increases the biocompatibility of the materials. Um, yes, uh, its production is uh, comparably uh, more costly, but I think uh, the, for the last 10 years, its production costs are very much lowered. So I think it's um, commercial availability and apl applications in different sectors will increase. Um, very fast. Plus, it's a very um, it's edible, so it can also used uh, to produce edible biomaterials. Uh, for instance, it's used in Korea for uh, producing edible electronic substances for putting in your body. So it's um, very interesting and very useful polymer for different applications. 
this, these are things that came to my mind. Thank you very much, Abram. Carlos Peña have a question. Okay, Abram, thank you very much for this uh, nice talk about the possibilities to use the biopolymers. And my question is um, regarding of uh, the production of, the, of these polymers. Uh, in the introduction, you mentioned that halomonas uh, can produce uh, 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 levan as well as PHA. And it's possible yeah. to produce in uh, simultaneous ways. And yes. I would like to know more about the condition that it's possible to get both, polymer, both, poly, both, both polymers, because it's not easy uh, as far as I understand, but I would like to know your opinion about the production. Thank you. Yes, um, I in this talk, I did not go into the, the production, but I think this is the most important, in, in, in interesting part of this Halomona system, because as you know, these PHB granules uh, are accumulated in the cells and um, you need glucose for this. Uh, Levan is produced on the outside of the cell. So we have two polymers, one is produced outside and the fructose is used for Levan and the glucose is used to accumulate this PHB inside. So you can use these cells um, optimized. Actually, we have one study published on this. We optimized the conditions in order for the co-production of these two polymers. One is in the cell, one is on, uh, on the outside of the cell. And um, you can actually uh, get the levan from the fermentation medium and use the biomass to extract these polyesters, biodegradable PHBs. And um, optimization of the reaction conditions is uh, not so easy because you, you have to adjust the conditions in order to favor both production, which uh, follow different metabolic routes actually. And from one substrate, which is uh, sucrose. So the sucrose is one glucose and one fructose. And this fructose goes to Levan production. This glucose goes to biomass production and PHB accumulation. I think this is one of the most in interesting parts of this uh, halomonas production system. For the Levan production, I think enzymatic production is more cost effective and feasible and fast. But if you want to co-produce these two polymers in one, in one step, it's, I think, more effective to use this microbial system. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. In, in YouTube, uh, Javier Arrizo asks, how easy is to evaluate these uh, biomaterials on clinical level? Could you talk? About it, um, I I don't have any uh, knowledge about the uh, systematic clinical application of uh, our material. We 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 never did, and uh, besides the food applications, I mean the biomedical applications. They these biomedical applications they lack uh, clinical. Uh, stage studies. They are not, as far as I know, they, there are no clinical studies. With the food, yes, there are, uh, I think, some studies uh, on Levan based foods, but for the biomedical, not that I'm aware of. I hope there will be. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Uh, Maura Martinez, please. Yeah. Hello, thank you very much for your interesting talk. My question is related to the binding of the group to the hydrogel. What is only the 60% of amphotericin release? Could the group be interacting with the gel matrix preventing its total release? Um, 
and uh, this uh, amphotericin uh, study um, was actually it, it, that was used as a, a model system. So uh, actually, we did not uh, um, optimize fully the the real uh, release, so that the, yes, there is a burst release of the hydrogels at the start. Um, but since in that study, our main aim was to show that Levan-based hydrogels can be used for the release of a compound, a, a drug, an active compound. So this was uh, just uh, a, 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 a slight burst release. Th that could be um, um, that could be because of the. Um, amphotericin B is a hydrophobic drug and it's not easy to, um, to get it out of the hydrogels. Only a certain amount could be released. Most of the drug was retained in the hydrogel. That was a very um, uh, big hurdle that we uh, obtained because it was also not easy to get the, the release profile because of the insol insolubility of the, that uh, compound in the assay, under the assay conditions. Yes, I am, we have a, another question. Uh, Wendy Sholalpa, cross-linked leaven is more thermostable, thermostable as it occurs with other cross-linked polymers as agar agarosa, agarose. Um, with the, the uh, um, cross-linking, um, it seems to improve the thermal stability, uh, but um, in general, uh, Levan is not a, that much of a thermostable polymer, so it's not known for its thermal stability. So we are more um, actually focused on its uh, stability under physiological conditions against other uh, types of uh, stresses. So uh, not um, around uh, body temperature. Okay, Agustin, please. Andrew, <clears throat> thank you very much for your effort you. to put together all these applic level applications. <laughs> I, I want to ask you, it was not clear to me if all the applications you, applications you mentioned were developed in your lab with Alamonas Levan or uh, some uh, were produced with Levans from different uh, microorganisms. Um, actually, uh, almost all of them were made with uh, Alamonas Levan. Only one study uh, was published with um, Bacillus Levan, but uh, most of the results were obtained with our polymer. So all the results actually were uh, obtained with our polymer only. So uh, okay, so that there are that's other, that's of course, uh, results obtained with other uh, Levans, but I did not. I, I I only showed what we had. Okay, that that leads me to another question, which is: uh, you mentioned in the your conclusions that. Uh, Levan research was important in order to produce Levan with control properties, uh, of course, molecular weight and branching. Uh, so how do you manage in your, in all the applications you, you, you describe to do it? I mean, do you produce a single uh, structure and molecular weight uh, Levan or do have you Managed to handle the reactions conditions in the reaction condition in order to produce a certain type of uh, leaven, which you know is uh, one of the key questions nowadays in leaven synthesis research. Yes, yes, uh, Augustin, uh, you know uh, better. You are the, of course, um, uh, you know how hard it is to get. Um, a, a particular structure and adjust the production conditions. And um, uh, for the uh, materials uh, research line, 
um, we came across this problem um, so much. We were fearing from this problem so much that um, uh, we preferred to use the enzymatically uh, produced levan because with this you can um, you can fix the production conditions much easily. But in this case, we were not able to use our previous knowledge with microbial levan because those two polymers gave completely different properties, especially for the hydrogel structures. And now we have um, a European project where Halomonas levan is produced for, um, for producing injectable hydrogels. Um, and for this uh, project, we only we decided to use only enzymatically produced polymer, and after each production, we check the NMR and all these uh, structural uh, properties of the polymer. But uh, as you said, uh, it's very very uh, difficult to optimize the production conditions, especially with the microbial system. With the microbial system, things are much more complicated. Thank you. What is the what is molecular weight of your of your leaven? What is the molecular weight of the Romanus leaven average? It, it's about two million uh, daltons. Right. Thank it's, you very much. So, Thank you very much, Abu. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, We have more uh, question. Uh, this is a similar, but. Austin, uh, thank you very much for your seminar. I wonder if you have a studies of the molecular composition of the polymer, um, example, no, number of branches. Uh, could this uh, be related with, uh, to the uh, physical chemical properties such as viscosity? How you compare it other other polymers is, is the similar the question, Austin. Uh, the uh, a microbial uh, polymer contains almost no branching, so it was a linear, almost linear one. And um, we, of course, published and uh, obtained uh, these uh, properties by uh, NMRs and all these known uh, methods. Um, when we produced uh, the polymer enzymatically, uh, we found out that uh, there were branches in a structure, uh, about 10%. And um, these changed its properties, these uh, hydrogel producing properties a lot. So, um, and in our studies, when we uh, compared uh, Levan, uh, with other polymers, we usually choose a polymer that is uh, as a that is used as a as a bench uh, mark as a, a standard for the applications. For instance, for the cosmetic applications, we usually um, choose uh, hyaluronic acid uh, for uh, as a as a control. So we compare it with uh, the performance of hyaluronic acid. Um, so it depends on the product. For, for, the, for the films, we used alginate because you know alginate is widely used for these uh, applications. It is uh, a, a very sticky polymer as well. But I think that the source of the polymer, for instance, for alginate, is uh, from uh, nature, it, uh, some are not obtained from microbial sources. And I think in those, the, the structure is uh, more diverse than the microbial produced ones. So some are obtained from like seaweed or some are obtained from plants. And uh, compared to those, I think microbial sources are more uh, uh, trustable in terms of the structure. 
but the enzymatically produced ones are more uh, sustainable to produce. This is what I think. Thank you, Abu. Uh, Joel uh, Spinoza. Uh, when you men mentioned the use of the levans as a nanocarrier system for drug delivery, have you used any strategy to improve the specificity to the target site? Uh, well, it um, the specificity depends on the the release uh, conditions of the drug. For instance, if the release is at a high pH pH responsive release, you can target the colon. For instance, this is uh, it depends on the polymer that or the nanoparticles uh, release properties. Um, whether it's uh, temperature response or pH responsive, um, or if uh, it's uh, quite um, hydrolysis in gastric juice, so when you take the drug, it will probably release its contents in the stomach uh, at uh, low pH. So um, I think with the uh, with uh, levan based systems, as in the other uh, biopolymers like dextran or uh, carboxymethylcellulose, um, you can come up with a strategy. And for this strategy, you can use also the chemical, uh, ch chemically modified derivatives of this polymer as well, like in the other polymers like dextran, or they are widely used in in pharmaceutical applications, so. Thank you. Uh, Javier Harrison, uh, thank you very much for this very interesting talk, Ebro, cheers. And uh, <laughs> Jorge Hernandez, uh, have you ever evaluated the cost in, you, in dollars of uh, producing, for example, one kilogram of, the, of leva? under the best reaction condition that you have achieved in order to introduce it uh, to the industry by a third party as a novel polymer. Thank you. Uh, so the, the cost of production? Yes, a kilogram of leva. Oh. Under uh, the best condition that you have achieved. Um, okay, um, we actually did this once, I don't remember the numbers, but um, in our case, um, for the production, for the sucrose, um, uh, we use uh, uh, industrial table sugar that you can buy from the market. So you know, if you know the price, this is one ingredient. The second ingredient in huge amounts is the, the salt in our case. And for this salt, um, we use uh, um, crude salt obtained from the industry. So they uh, send us uh, salt for the production. So we don't pay for the salt as well. Um, but since we have this uh, halophilic microorganism, the salt and uh, the sugar, uh, as all these uh, medium contents are prepared under unsterile conditions. So we just um, um, sterilize it before the production and then uh, the whole process is done uh, in open conditions. For the enzymatic process, it's more straightforward. If you just put the enzyme, the, the main cost is the production of the recombinant enzyme itself, I think. Uh, but I don't, uh, I don't know the, the exact uh, um, price. M maybe one kilo is very, very expensive. Expensive, I think, but it depends on the scale that you produce. Yeah. Yes. Mm, I think that this was uh, the last question because uh, 
we had in, in time, but was very amazing uh, conference. Every all my students, all, all the students at, at the institute are very uh, uh, excited because we have a lot of uh, questions. Thank you very much for your conference, Ebru. Thank you for having me. Thank I you. Hope, I hope I see you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Hopefully in May. I expect you. <laughs> mm, okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.